Okay, so uh, as you may be aware, today is International Women's Day, and I'm going to be talking about a film that is not only directed by a woman, Liz Garbus, but also about an influential woman, Nina Simone. And the film I'm talking about is What Happened, Miss Simone, which is the Oscar-nominated documentary. It was one of three Netflix original documentaries uh, for an Oscar and this, this year. And yeah, it's it's an interesting film because obviously there's a there's a, a biopic version coming out soon called Nina, and that's been in the press quite a lot recently over sort of how legitimate it is and the idea of a black woman blacking up and wearing a prosthetic nose, and there's sort of a lot of debate about the ethics of that. But yeah, that's one of one of the, the best properties of this film is actually how legitimate it seems. Um, it features interviews with Simone's daughter, who is someone who has actually directly criticised the biopic version. And yeah, so she, she, she comes in and it's also got interviews with her ex-husband, although those were filmed in 2006, so I presume before this project was even an idea. And that's particularly interesting because the film sort of centres around not only her musical career, but the problems that she faced. And one of those was, in fact, with her husband, who was also her manager, and he actually abused her at some point in her career, sort of at the height of her fame. So he is interviewed in the film, so it's interesting to kind of get his perspective on it. But of course, he's not there to actually kind of answer any of these claims. The daughter herself, she actually comments on the fact that her mother used to used to abuse her. So it, it's interesting because, you know, it, it, it's a documentary which is sort of there to sort of look at the achievements of Nina Simone, but it does also stand quite objectively in, in assessing the problems that, that she faced and her problematic character itself. So, uh, yeah, one thing that I thought was particularly interesting with this film is the way it deals with Simone's involvement in the civil rights movement. And it sort of sets her up as someone who actually kind of got too involved in the, in the sense that it, it sort of overwhelmed her and it became too, too big a part of her life and that she was sort of putting her, her personal life at second place uh, because she th thought the cause was so important. Um, and so it goes into quite a lot of detail about her writing of the song Mississippi God Damn, which is sort of about the, the civil rights movement and the Selma Montgomery march. And one thing I should say is that within a 15-minute section of the film, she discussing this, it, it actually deals with the Selma Montgomery march far, far better than Ava DuVernay's Selma, which is a film that faithful listeners will know and viewers will know is a film that I do not like. And it did everything and more than Selma within 15 minutes. So make, make what you will of that. So, yeah, one thing that I expected and hoped to kind of see a bit more of was the songwriting development behind some of her other big hits, things like Cinnamon, because it, it sort of looks at like her breakthrough success, um, her, her early rise to fame, and obviously, yes, yeah, songs like Mississippi Goddamn, and it kind of the film sort of closes with her performance at the, I think it's the 75 or 76 Montreux Jazz Festival in Switzerland. But it, yeah, it doesn't really talk that much about the latter stages of her career. I mean, this is the end point. And I mean, I know for a fact that she had quite a lot of success in 1979 with Baltimore, which was a song written by Randy Newman, uh, which she did a cover of. It's a fantastic song. And the album that that appears on is, for me, one of her best albums. It doesn't, doesn't touch on that at all. And Simone didn't actually pass away until 2003. So there's a good sort of 25, 30 years of her career, or, or life even, that's not touched on at all. And I think it would, would have been interesting to know that, because, I, I mean, I know she, she died in France. It would have been interesting to kind of explore a bit more of that side of her. One thing I would say that works really well in the film is the voiceover. Basically, Simone provides the voiceover of the film, which kind of guides the narrative. So you know, perhaps that's why there are sort of limitations elsewhere. But they're basically lifted from some interviews that she did in the, I think, the 70s, or it could be the 80s, early 80s, where she sort of reflects on her career and a lot of the problems that she faced. So that's, so that's good. I mean, that, as I say, that is one of the, the best things about this film, is, is just how, how legitimate it does seem to Simone. And I think there is going to inevitably be a lot of comparison to this film when Nina does actually come out in a couple of months' time because, the, as I say, this, is, this film really seems like it does do her justice, whereas I'm not sure Nina will necessarily do so. But who knows? Maybe it will. So, yeah, I mean, overall, 
it's 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 a very good film. It's it's not overly long. A lot of these kind of films can drag a bit. It did sort of leave you wanting more, which I don't know if that's really a positive feature with the documentary, but it did leave me wanting more. But overall, yeah, really good film. I can see why it's nominated for the Oscar. I can also see why it didn't win the Oscar, because it's, it's not as good as Amy. As good as it may be, it's not as good as Amy. So, yeah, for the rating, I'm going to go 8 out of 10. It's on Netflix, so you can go and watch it right now, along with, with all the other Netflix Oscar-nominated films. So, yes. What happened, Miss Simone? 8 out of 10.